So in this video, we will summarize um, characteristics of heat and work interactions, right? So we have talked about heat interactions. What is heat interaction? Heat interaction is that interaction which happens or is driven by a temperature difference. And this interaction could be conduction, convection, radiation, all three modes, right? And uh, work interaction is something that is not a heat interaction and yet is done by a closed system, right? Um, or you can define it uh, in such a way like, uh, for example, a system, uh, if it does not, if it's not a heat interaction, if it's not a mass exchange, then it must be a work interaction, right? Uh, and so we want to summarize because, because this causes a lot of confusion usually and depending on how you define a system, something, the same phenomena could sometimes be a work interaction and sometimes be a, a heat interaction, right? So we should summarize what heat and work are, right? So uh, one of the uh, first things that we should recognize about heat and work are both are boundary phenomena. Right? Both are boundary phenomena, which means that if I have a system, right, um, any arbitrary system, and let's say I define my system that way, right? So then I should look for heat and work only at the boundaries of the system. So what happens inside does not constitute heat or work. Right? So for example, there could be uh, a, an object here, uh, let us call that A, there could be an object here B and let us say the temperature of A is higher than the temperature of B and so there would be some heat transfer if A and B are brought in contact, there would be some heat transfer from A to B, right? But as far as this system is concerned, the way I have defined my system, heat, there is no heat transfer, even though there might be energy interaction between A and B. If I had drawn system around A or around B, then I would have a heat interaction for A or B as the case may be. But the way I have drawn my system, A and B interacting does not constitute heat, does not constitute work as far as this system is concerned, the system as I have defined it in the red dashed line, right? So uh, same thing with work, right? So if there is, for example, a uh, piston cylinder device which is expanding against a piston, uh, inside my system the way I have defined it, then it is not work interaction because that is happening inside my system. No interaction with the surroundings, right, as I have defined the boundary of my system. So both are boundary phenomena and this is uh, something that is easily overlooked. This is something that people uh, tend to forget and so it is very important to remember that both heat and work are boundary phenomena, right. And uh, both are, so both are path dependent or process dependent. So what do we mean by that, right? So for example, we in the first chapter, we talked about um, state, right? We talked about intensive properties. What are some examples? We talked about temperature, we talked about pressure. We talked about specific internal energy, specific entropy, specific enthalpy. We talked about density. We talked about specific volume. We talked about constant heat at specific uh, constant pressure, specific heat at constant volume, and so on. Right. So we talked about all of these intensive properties. At that time, we did not specifically or we did not explicitly define these to be point functions. These are also called state functions. What does this mean? What this means is that the value of this property, right, once you define a state, the value of this property is fixed, temperature, right? If a state is fixed, then I have a particular value of specific entropy, a particular value of pressure, a particular value of specific volume, and a particular value of specific enthalpy, right? What it does not depend is how you got into that state, 
right. So, for example, I can take air in this room, I can cool it down, I can cool it down to cryogenic temperatures, um, condense out the nitrogen and uh, then collect pure nitrogen and then make a cylinder of nitrogen and then bring it back to nitrogen uh, at atmospheric pressure and temperature and then I will have a cylinder of pure nitrogen, right. So, I have a cylinder full of pure nitrogen, let us say I have 1 kg nitrogen at a temperature of uh, uh, 300 Kelvin and a pressure of 1 atmosphere. Another way I could do this is I pass air over something called a pressure sink adsorption uh, device that can separate nitrogen and oxygen, right, assuming that there is only nitrogen and oxygen in air. Then I can use this process called pressure swing adsorption PSA to separate out the nitrogen and oxygen and this is not, does not involve refrigeration, does not involve condensation of nitrogen. I can then uh, make another uh, cylinder that has again nitrogen uh, 1 kilogram and it has a temperature of 300 Kelvin and a pressure of 1 atmosphere, right. So, in other words, I have manufactured or I have put together a system in two different ways or there may be other ways of putting together the same system, right. And the state of these two systems is the same, which means they are at the same temperature and pressure, which are independent for ideal gases. And so, therefore, um, this system has the same state at this system. And so, all the intensive properties of this system and all the intensive properties of this system are correspondingly equal, right. So, the density of nitrogen in this box is the same as density of nitrogen in this box. The, um, the temperature of nitrogen in this box is the same as that one, right. Um, the specific entropy of nitrogen in this box is the same as the specific entropy of nitrogen in this box, even though they have made very different journeys to be in that system, right. And so, what does that mean? That means that these are point functions. These only depend on the state at that particular instant of time. It does not depend on how you got there, right. So, in other words, these are called point functions or these are called state functions, right. And as opposed to this, which are point or state functions, heat and work are process functions. So, which means that um, if suppose I have, a, let us say again, a piston cylinder arrangement and uh, let us say that uh, the inside pressure is P and let us say I start there P and uh, so let us say T and V. So, let us say I have a certain temperature and specific volume, let us say I have 1 and uh, state 2, right. I have two different states of the system, right. And as you can probably imagine, there are multiple ways of going from 1 to 2. I can go that way, I can go that way, I can go that way, any number of ways, right. Different ways of going from 1 to 2. In each of these paths that I can take, the heat and work interactions are going to be different. In other words, the heat as well as the work interaction depends on whether you take this path or this path or this path. In other words, it is a process dependent or a path dependent variable, right. It does not depend only on the end states. Of course, it does depend on the end states, but not just on the end states. So, if I know state 1 and if I know state 2 and if I told you that the system went from state 1 to state 2, you would not be able to tell me what was the heat interaction or what was the work interaction, right. So, in other words, these are path dependent or process dependent and so therefore, um, for a small change in heat or work, we do not use D, we use the delta, right. So, for example, if I have a small change in entropy, I would call that DS, um, DU, right. Uh, uh, a differential uh, quantity, I would define as ds and du, right. Here I cannot have a differential because it is not a path, it is because it is not a point function, it is a path function. And so, therefore, I have something called delta w and delta q, right, where I define delta w as the work done between 1 and 2, if you go through that path what that I am describing about, right. So, these are path dependent, so there are no exact differentials, uh, these are what we call path differentials and so, uh, this we write as delta, uh, this one we can write as D, right. So, I can write DT, 
I can write dp right or d um, rho I can write dv I can write any of these uh, because these are all point functions or state functions whereas heat and work are not right and uh, both have units of energy which is joule right both have the units of energy um, but a system has energy system has energy but system does not It does not make sense when somebody says heat content, right? Because that is not a correct word. There is no such thing. A system cannot have heat. A system cannot have work. A system can only have a heat interaction or a work interaction. It cannot have heat. It cannot have work, right? But it does have energy, right? Um, energy when it is transiting into a system or out of a system because of a temperature difference is called heat. So, it is already energy in transit, it is not energy within a system, right. Similarly, energy um, in transit uh, when it is not a heat interaction, when it is not a mass exchange, it is a work interaction and that is what is called uh, a work interaction, right. So, so uh, system has energy and it does not have heat or work and that is something that we have to remember about heat and work, right. So, that is a summary about heat and work interactions.